for a championship. Keep enjoying the game. Keep playing good basketball. Now we're coming back home and we got to protect home court. And this is the finals. It's dramatic. Middleton three-pointer. It's good! More Middleton magic! Booker fires a three. Bang! Devin Booker from downtown! Knocked away and stolen by Holiday! And a pinnacle ball throws it down! What a turnaround! We know what the deal is. It's one game away from being an NBA champ. But the job is not done. Jalen Rose, I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen Jacoby. What, what is it that we do? We get a people! What? Yes. They won. The people got an NBA Finals classic game in Game 5. The Suns jumped out to an early lead. The Bucks came back. And then the Bucks jumped out to a big lead. And then the Suns came back. It came down to the wire. But Jalen... Giannis Antetokounmpo has been dominant this series. He now stands one win away from the Larry O'Brien Trophy. What do you think about Giannis in Game 5? The great debate. Bag up, please, and let me cook. Because on this show, on a daily basis, I told my brother David why Giannis should not only re-sign with the Bucks, but how beneficial it was going to be for him to stay loyal to the city of Milwaukee. And lo and behold, he's one game away from an NBA championship. And you know what else he's gonna spark that I love? He's gonna spark the debate that all rings aren't created equal. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, everybody, but if and when Giannis wins this championship and the loyalty that he showed to the city of Milwaukee and the Bucks. He's going to enjoy that ring. He's going to appreciate that ring. He's not going to have to, oh, wait, go join a super team in order to get one. He didn't have to do that. Chris Middleton elevated within the system. And then all of a sudden, you add Drew Holiday. You add Bobby Portis. You add P.J. Tucker. And they're doing it without, without their starting shooting guard, Dante DiVincenzo, by the way. So the Milwaukee Bucks are on the doorstep, again, of getting a first championship since the early 70s, and shout to Giannis because he's been outstanding in these finals. He has been outstanding in these finals, and he had a finals moment in Game 5, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Devin Booker, down by one point, drives to his left, gets the ball stolen from him from Drew Holiday right there. Just look at Drew's eyes. You are up by one. With the seconds waning, under 24 seconds, I'm pulling it out and getting fouled. I'm pulling it out and getting fouled. That would be the smart basketball thing to do. But Drew said that Giannis was screaming. And he looked at him right now. He's like, all right, I guess we're doing this now. And we know what happens from there. What did you think about this sequence? It was an incredible NBA final sequence for the ages because of how it was done. And by the way, this is why you bring Drew Holiday to your squad, Jacoby. It's one thing to be a lockdown defender at the guard position, but he smothers smaller guards in particular. Earlier in his career, I saw him do this in a series against Dame Lillard when mm -hmm. the Pelicans ended up sweeping them out of the playoffs. And do you know how close you are to getting a foul there? Do you know the kind of chance that he took of getting a foul there? And then you get the steal, you're out in transition, and you throw a lob to Giannis? with an exclamation point for the game, and he hanging all on the rim. And that is a signature play for a guy who had the block against Aiton, and now mm -hmm. the dunk. And so Giannis is cementing why, if and when the Bucks go ahead and close this thing out, he's gonna be finals MVP. We're gonna have plenty of time to talk about it, but this series is not over. But I do want to celebrate this play more because it's everything that Drew Holiday does. He grabs the ball, maybe he maybe he got a little left hand to right wrist, whatever. But this pass is just so risky. It's so risky. So much can go wrong. It's so close to the rim. Giannis had to use his every every inch of his wingspan to get it. And the reaction from Giannis, I mean, this was just a chef's kiss play. And I'm also glad you brought up the block. Because Giannis also had the signature play in the previous win, and there are two, there's two like magnificent Giannis plays away from the Suns literally celebrating a championship last night. But Jalen, I want to mention Drew Holiday's defense again because Chris Paul hasn't been the same, and Drew Holiday has a lot to do with that. No. What are your thoughts on Chris Paul's play so far? 
So if you look at the numbers from the previous game and you were just box score watching, you'd be like, he had a decent game. But the Chris Paul that closed out the Clippers and then began this series scoring over 30 and was hunting, hunting shots and making threes and good decisions has not been the same player. Look at those stats, Jacoby. Chris Paul turning over the basketball in crucial situations. These are just things we don't see. But you know what? As I sat back and analyzed this series, I thought about it more. And the Milwaukee Bucks are the team that's dealt with the agony, that's dealt with defeat. And when you don't just throw a collection of players together, all of a sudden, that team has to go through some turbulence. And they've done that over the last couple of seasons. They've watched the Toronto Raptors with Kawhi Leonard go on to win the East and win the championship. They watched the Miami Heat go on to win the East. They saw the Nets create a super team. They hearing about the process in Philly. And then all of a sudden, they can stay consistent to what they've done. They make it to the NBA Finals. Now they have a great champion. Now they have a great opportunity to win the championship this year. While we've mentioned Giannis's performance the last couple games, someone else who needs to be recognized is that man Devin Booker. He has been absolutely on fire on the offensive end in the last two games in particular. Forty plus in both of them, both losses. What do you think about Book? So here's the deal. It's been great to see Book and Middleton go back and forth at it in the mid-range. And here, basketball purists, I want to tell you why this looked different. In these finals, it's not five players on both teams standing around the three-point line, driving, kick, and launching up three-point shots with 19 or 20 to go on the clock. They're, they're actually exhausting possessions. One pick and roll, one reverse, go downhill, drive, kick, swing. And it's refreshing to watch Devin Booker and Chris Middleton light up the scoreboard. But here's the difference. Devin Booker doesn't have a Giannis. Devin Booker doesn't have Chris Paul playing the way Drew Holiday played in particular in the previous game. That's why they're trailing in the series. They are trailing in the series, but it's on such a razor-thin margin. I mean, Devin Booker had the ball in his hands, down by one. And I was like, oh, this is going in. Now, I think everybody watching that game was like, this is going in. He's about to give him a one-point lead. We'll see what happens when they go back on the other end. But you mentioned Middleton. Middleton has been a key contributor to the Bucks, especially closing out games. And again, he was on fire last night. What did you think of Middleton hitting some tough shots like that one? So first and foremost, I want to applaud Giannis and his unselfishness and being the ultimate teammate and not succumbing to a player's ego. So many times when you're the best player on the team, you feel like you got to do it all. He understands where he's weak at. He's a 6'11", 7-foot guy. Most of those guys struggle shooting threes. Most of those guys, many of those guys struggle shooting free throws. He understands that. So the adjustment for the Bucks this year was to allow Chris Middleton to be the actual closer. And I appreciate how Giannis embraces that for Middleton. And then I appreciate how he's delivered. And we talk about not having highlights, Jacoby. You know how much I love his game. Getting yep. somebody on their hip, bumping them off, a little spin move, step back, knock down, and the efficiency. This didn't just start for those that are watching Chris Middleton. He's been flirting with 50, 40, 90 the past couple of years. They just needed more assistance. You add Drew Holiday, you add Bobby Portis, you add PJ Tucker. Those guys give you defense, those guys give you toughness. And those guys weren't a part of the heartbreak that this team dealt with the last couple of years. So now all of a sudden, you have a collection of guys that are determined to try to win it all this year. They got great contribution from their three stars, Middleton and Giannis and Holiday, but also Pat Connaughton hit some good threes, and he was four for six. Bobby Portis, yep. well, you look at the stat sheet, it's not that impressive, but a lot of hustle plays and loose balls and rebounds and box out. He did a great job while Giannis was on the bench bringing this team back from a 16-point deficit. Jalen, you were in the building. I was watching the game. The Suns came out and hit everything, and they were up by 16. And I'm looking at this going, is this going to be a blowout victory for the Suns? And then they turned back around. What was it about? What was the vibe like in the building during that breakout and that turnaround? You know, the beauty of this series, Jacoby, is that you have fresh faces. 
neither team has a player that's ever won an NBA championship. And then going back and forth to these cities, both fan bases are chanting Bucks in six or Suns in six. I appreciate that so much, but here's the problem. Shout to Brandon Jennings, who actually was the first person in the Buck uniform recently to call this out. The Bucks have a chance to actually do it in six. So for Phoenix, the vibe was great, Jacoby. They were moving the ball. The crowd mm -hmm. was in the frenzy. There was a dude counting his money on the front row. And then all of a sudden, the second quarter started. And when the second unit came in, the Bucks started to play harder. They started to play more physical. And here's what the Phoenix Suns did that allowed the Bucks to get back in the game. They started shooting too fast in the shot clock. Ooh, I remember point. sitting there watching the game and I'm like, it was like five straight possessions, Jacoby, where they shot the ball within the first five or eight seconds of the shot clock. That now allows the team momentum plays to get back in the game. And then Portis made a couple of shots. And then Connaughton made a couple of shots. And then Middleton and then Drew Holiday. And then you bring Giannis back in. It was a great basketball game. It was a lot of ebbs and flows. Jalen, Team USA got a big warm-up win against Pau Gasol. Remember